Welcome to week number nine of my Survivor review. Week number nine, everything's fine. Well, actually, it's not fine. If you're a big fan of strategy, you'll love tonight's episode of Survivor. If you're a big fan of the nonsense that happens on this show, you might want to get a refund at the door. Now, I'm not saying that we're not going to have a good time. I'm just saying that there wasn't much to work with with tonight's episode. I'm not a smoker, but I know that there's some cigarettes out there that are 50% less cancer. This show's going to be 50% less nonsense. Fortunately, this guy's picking up the slack in his cool members-only jacket and his super cool mustache. If you can't figure out who this is, I'll tell you in a couple minutes. So let's get into the recap of the show. So when tonight's episode started, I tweeted, Jay gets hit by the Kim train tonight. So no question mark at the end of that statement this week. It seems as if I'm a little more confident in my prediction this time around. We'll see if I'm right. Now for the record, I don't do spoilers, but I do have a pretty good record of predicting things that happen on Survivor. If you check my touts from last season of Survivor, you'll know that I had like a four week streak of predicting everything that was gonna happen on the show. And I'll give up my secret right now, just between you and me. So shh, keep it on the down low. All you have to do is figure out who the person is that's making all the decisions, in this case it's Kim, and then put yourself in her shoes and see who she would think her biggest opponent is. Then temper that with who's going to win immunity. Now of course the episode starts out with the recap, and again what they're trying to drive home here is men versus women. Then we're treated to the meeting of the Zans, Troy Zan and Tarzan. It appears that Tarzan has almost given up. He thinks the women are going to win this game. Troyzan, on the other hand, thinks he can pull something off. Meanwhile, Jay gets shot in his dream. He doesn't reveal the shooter, but my guess is that it was Alicia. If you remember earlier this season, she killed Kat in her dream. So up next is the reward challenge, and guess who doesn't show up? This guy right here. That's right, this is Jeff Probst, believe it or not. And if you like this picture, you'll love this one. Wow, where can I get a pair of those shorts? Now don't laugh too much because I'm sure that you have some embarrassing pictures of your own. We all do. I mean, here's a picture of me with long hair. I'm actually thinking about growing it out again. But anyway, let's get back on track. Jeff Probst here doesn't show up for the reward challenge. So it's another DIY challenge, my favorite. Actually, I hate them and they should never, ever, ever happen again. Remember what I said a couple of weeks ago about Survivor being that beautiful woman that the producers have been married to for 12 years? DIY challenges are sort of like you giving your beautiful, hot, sexy wife money so she can go to an event and have dinner by herself. It's not good. It's kind of sad, actually. So anyway, do you want to know what they were playing for? A boat ride to a secluded beach where they'd have a big barbecue feast. So the survivors split into two teams, and the challenge is basically wrapping your balls around a big pole. Kat and Tarzan lead their team to victory, and the losing team avoids total humiliation only because Christina scores one point. So the winning team consists of the two Zans, Tarzan and Troyzan, Jay, Alicia, and Kat. The losers stay at camp, and the winners go off to their feast. Now during the feast, Jay freaks out a little bit. In the back of his mind, there's always that thought that the girls are going to take over this game. Unfortunately, Jay doesn't realize that that happened a couple of weeks ago. Jay knows that there's some blind sides coming up, and he just hopes it's not him. Where have I heard that before? Now, during the commercial break, Kat is abducted by aliens, and she's replaced with a highly functioning being that's capable of deception and strategic thought. Now, we don't see any of this on camera, but it's very evident that it happened. It still looks like Cat, but clearly it's not Cat. So the reward feast is over, and everybody's back at camp. The girls then decide that it's either going to be Troyzan or... Jay. ...that goes home next. And it seems like Chelsea's morals get in the way. Pfft. Morals. Apparently, she's finding it really difficult to stab these two guys in the back. So Alien Cat goes over to Sabrina and tells her about Chelsea's moral dilemma. And this is when I really realize that there's a solid four alliance. There's Kim, Chelsea, Sabrina, and Alien Cat. 
I think Alien Cat is fourth on the totem pole, but she doesn't know that. And at this point, I can't see any of the other three turning on each other, even at the end of the game. Which tells me that if any of the other survivors want to win this game, they have to do it within the next two episodes of this show. So after hearing about Chelsea's moral dilemma, Sabrina says in one of her confessionals, you gotta put on your big girl panties and make some big girl decisions. Now what are big girl panties? Are they thongs? Or are they granny panties? I wouldn't know, because obviously I don't wear panties. Except for a couple of times when I put them on my head. But that doesn't count. You know, when I'm facing a tough situation or a tough decision, I think I gotta man up. Or I gotta nut up. I never think I gotta put on my big girl panties. Maybe if I was gonna go pick some flowers, or if I was going to scrapbook, I probably want my big girl panties on for that. Anyway, while all this is going on, Troy Zan and Jay are talking about how they have to get rid of a girl next. Which reminds me never to let either of these guys negotiate a deal for me. So even though Jay thinks he's working with Chelsea and Kim, he's still freaking out thinking that the girls are going to double cross him. He wants to get rid of Alicia next, and he's talking to Kat about it. So all the girls come over to reassure Jay that Alicia is going next. So Jay wants to lock this down. And he says, and I quote, Can we make this set and not derive from it? Sure, the girls are not going to derive from it. They might deviate from it, but they're not going to derive from it. But Jay, what you should have derived from the situation was that Kim was acting pretty shady. So up next is the immunity challenge, and if you're a Survivor fan, this should look very familiar to you. Now, as I've said in the past, I'm no survivor statistician, but I don't think a man has ever won this challenge. Fortunately, this challenge is not a DIY challenge, and Jeff Probst shows up. All the survivors are in position and ready to go, and Jeff starts the challenge with five words. This challenge is officially on. Tarzan lasts for four of those five words. Apparently the game was a foot, a foot that lost its balance. Now, the role of Jeff Probst during all of this is to try and tempt the survivors with food to quit the challenge. Now I ask you, what's the most expensive meal you've ever eaten? $100? $200? $500? Have you ever eaten a million dollar meal before? I know I haven't. But Jay has. He had a million dollar plate of chicken wings and a beer to wash it down with. So at the end of the challenge, Chelsea wins immunity, and we find out that she's had laser hair removal, and Alicia hasn't. And now it appears that Chelsea's moral dilemma is over. Screw Troyzan and screw Jay. Chelsea loves money and all is well with the world again. So it's time to do some last minute strategizing before tribal council and Kim is pulling all the strings. She wants to split the vote between Troyzan and Jay because she's smart enough to know that Troyzan might have an idol, which Jay later confirms to her. Now, I've watched every season of Survivor, and I've got to say that Kim is playing one of the best strategic games I've ever seen. And it seems that Troy Zan is one of the only people who's really on to her. But unfortunately, it might be a little too late for Troy Zan. So knowing that his back's against the wall, he decides to play his idol. Tarzan, on the other hand, seems like he's come up with a unique strategy. If you can't beat him, join him. And Tarzan tries to blend in with the women by wearing a lady top, a blouse of some sort, to tribal council. And remember, he is a plastic surgeon, so who knows what lengths he'll go to to try and blend in with the ladies. So it's time to go to tribal council. Troyzan puts his hand down his pants, whips out a salty idol, and gives it to Jeff, and is safe for another week. Which leaves Jay bum-puzzled and bamboozled. Ba-dang-a-dang! So before I wrap this up, I want to debut a new segment here on my show that's called From Your Mouth to Lynn Spielman's Ears. And the first one comes from one of the coolest survivors this season, Troy Zan. He says, and I quote, Survivor Trev is hands down the best Survivor recap man. It's hashtag must watch TV. Wow, that's quite the endorsement, Troy Zan. Thank you. 
If you guys haven't already, you need to check out Troy Zan's YouTube page. He has some cool monkey videos on there, as well as one of his Survivor audition tapes. And you need to follow him on Twitter. The next quote comes from the ever-cool Christina Cha. She says, and I quote, Survivor Trev, once again, another awesome Survivor recap. Christina also subscribed to my YouTube channel here, which is something that you need to do by hitting the subscribe button right up here. She also follows me on Twitter, which is something you also need to do. I'm at Survivor Trev on the Twitters. But don't only follow me, follow Christina on Twitter too. She's definitely the most accessible and personable Survivor this season. Also, I'd like to mention that Chelsea retweeted the link to my show last week, so thank you, Chelsea. But it doesn't end there. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this show because it makes it all worthwhile. And there's quite a few of you who leave a lot of great comments on my YouTube page and my Facebook page for that matter. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys next week.